Assessing COVID-19 risk in the return to schools. Toronto Sick Kids report is not gospel. In the past month, one of the most pressing legal challenges for Ontario Family Courts has been to determine on a case-by-case -case basis whether a particular child should resume attending in-person schooling or should they embark on distant learning. In this context, courts had to receive and evaluate a good deal of evidence on the risk inherent in schools reopening and students attending in person. These come from various sources, including the Ontario government, medical professionals, media, and other independent bodies. Collectively, it can be a staggering array of materials and evidence for the court to consider when making their decisions. One of these potential sources, known as the Sick Kids Report, has been frequently tendered to the family courts lately by litigants and gained considerable media attention. But the relevance, weight, and proper use of this report is still under contention. In a recent case, the judge was likewise presented by the litigants with the report to consider and described it this way. The Sick Kids Report refers to a report prepared by the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto entitled COVID-19 Guidance for School Reopening, dated July 29, 2020. The report indicates it was prepared in partnership with respected children's health hospitals and organizations, including CHEO and McMaster Children's Hospital, among others. The ver very first sentence of the report sets out its objective to advocate for the safe return of children and youth to school by emphasizing the importance of reopening for broader child health balanced against the potential important risks of COVID-19. The judge explained the report is increasingly appearing amidst the tendered evidence in court disputes between parents over whether and where to send their children to school. The judge continued to say that the Sick Kid Report is gaining a lot of traction among family litigants. More and more often, parents are attaching the Sick Kids Report to their affidavits or case conference briefs to argue in support of, for example, in-person learning for children, or to argue that the risk to the children from COVID-19 is small. In response, the other parent will then cite and attach newspaper articles in which medical or public health experts raise criticism, criticisms about the sick, children, sick kids report to support a parent's argument for online learning or the observation of stricter COVID-19 protocols. The judge noted that this was the same use put to the report in a recent case where the court ultimately rejected the report as being neither authoritative nor conclusive. The judge elaborate, elaborated on the reason for this in, his in the conclusion of the case. The problem is that the parties making these arguments are unlikely to be experts, and there is no expert evidence offered to explain or contextualize any of the, the allegations being made. Even leaving aside hearsay concerns, without expert evidence, the court is, in not, is not in a position to evaluate whether the sick kid's report is correct on any given point, or whether an expert quoted in the newspaper article in opposition to the conclusions reached by the sick kids is correct, or in neither case. As the judge noted previously, it declined to consider the sick kids report, writing that there are experts on all sides of the COVID-19 debate. However, the decision to reopen schools and the steps being taken to protect children and staff fall within the purview of the Ontario government. In rejecting the report as being the sole authority on the issue, the judge in this particular case concluded that courts do not function as a vacuum Judges are aware that there's experts with competing views. Litigants should not expect that the sick kids report to be taken as gospel 
when it comes to children in COVID-19. In this particular case, the court declined to consider the sick kids report. So what do you think? Did the court get this right or should they have considered the report? Like, comment, and share this video. You can subscribe by clicking the bell at the bottom. Leave your questions in the comment box below. We're going to endeavor to answer your questions at the end of each week. Until next time, I'm Russell Alexander.